Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today. I am your instructor, CPA Aringo Frederick, and in our class today, it is a continuation for what we started earlier on. Recall, in our last class, we introduced valuation of bonds slash debentures, where we mentioned that for bonds, we'll always be looking at three main types. These are, number one, talk about irredeemable. In this case, uh, they don't have a, a maturity period. Talk about redeemable, they do have a maturity period, and also the same case for redeemable, we also uh, slash it with convertible bonds. In our session today, it is a continuation of that. Remember we did some various illustration questions. So in our class today, I'll also want us to do at least two illustration questions, which will cement the concept that we did very well. I'm going to share the question in our screens. Let us check it out and work it out. So, Looking at this illustration question, my good students, this is what we are told, believing that we are able to see the question. We are told that Gartier Limited has issued a 20-year bond with a nominal value of 1,000 and a coupon annual rate of 9%. Coupon payments are made semi-annually in arrears. They are made semi-annually in arrears. The yield to maturity of the bond is 12% per annum. So basically, whenever I'm given the case that uh, I'm given a specific year bond, that will definitely qualify it to be a redeemable, a redeemable, a redeemable, a redeemable bond. So required, we are told that uh, the market value of the bond, number two, the new value of the bond, if yield to maturity goes down to 8% per annum. So yield to maturity, meaning that we're talking about that redemption percentage, right? If it goes down to if it goes down to to eight percent. So the first thing that you must always tend to recall is our formula. Remember the formula that we talked about determining the market value, and this is what we did, believing that we have the question. So recall this formula of ours, my good students, to determine the market value of a redeemable or convertible bonds will always be talking about the interest that is in annuity times the present value interest factor cost of debt given the number of years plus the redemption value or conversion value times the present value interest factor cost of debt given number of years and remember the redemption or conversion value we mentioned that it will always be on a lump sum basis so Working out that question, the first thing that we need to identify is the following. Number one, we need to determine the interest part of it. Do we have the interest part of it? We can determine the interest. That is the first thing that we need to do. Talk about our interest. If you talk about our interest, we are told that we had the... Uh, with a nominal value of a thousand and a coupon annual rate of nine percent, right? So we're having nine percent. But remember that amount you are told that annual rate of uh, coup ten nine percent payments are made semi annually. Look at that component; they are made semi annually. So to determine that interest, I'll be having the nine percent. Yes times a thousand my good students but remember they were made semi-annually so by a half that would give us a component of interest which in that case I should be having a uh, nine percent times a thousand times 0.5 that should give us a figure of 45 that is a component of interest right what about our cost of debt kd we are told that our cost of debt in this case you are given our uh, cost of debt, remember we are given, cost of this bond you are given, 12% per annum. And if it is 12% per annum, what about semi-annual? What about for half an year? We should be talking of 12. We divide by 2 to give us what? 6%. To give us 6%. What about our N? N, my good students, in this case, if you can see it, I was given how many years? I was given... Uh, 20-year bond with a nominal value. So our N in this case, this was a 20 years, yes, but you are being, uh, this amount was being paid semi-annually. 
So, meaning that I love to multiply it by 2 to give us n to be what? To be 40. n will be, n will be 40, n will be 40, n will be 40. The moment I do have those factors, it will now be very easy for us to work it out. Because recall, the moment you do have the factors, it will be very easy now for us to work it out. Because this is what we will be expected to have. To determine the market value, of course, if you can recall, we are going to talk about our interest. We multiply by the present value interest factor annuity. This time around, I'm looking at 6%. And you're talking about period 40. We add the redemption value. We add the redemption value. Redemption value, my good student times the present value interest factor, 6%, 40 period of hours. So that is what you should have. Now, the moment you do have that case, the next question that you're going to ask ourselves is, do we know how to check it on our calculator? Or do we still remember the formula of working out present value interest factor annuity? We know very well that to work out the present value interest factor annuity, in this case, we're looking at 6%, 40 period, we should always recall this formula, where we normally consider 1 with less, 1 plus R raised to our negative N, we divide by our rate, which in this case, we have it there. Where in this case, therefore, we should be talking of how much? We should be talking of 1 minus, that is of course, uh, one point or rather one plus zero point zero six raised to power negative uh, 40 our period we divide by 0 0.06 so that should give us how much that should give us talk about uh, 1.06 talk about 1.06 we raised to power negative 40 one minus answer we divide by 0 0.06, that should give me a figure of 15.0463. Uh -huh. What about our present value interest factor? 6% period 40. Remember the formula? 1 plus R raised to power negative N. So therefore, in this case, you're going to talk of 1 plus 0 0.06 we raise to our negative 40. Where in that case, that should give us what? That should give us a 1.06 raised to our negative 40. In that case, I'm having a figure of 0 0.0972. That is what you should be having. That is what we should be having. That is what we should be having. So therefore, solving for our market value in this case, our market value would be the interest that we've determined. Uh, that is, uh, of course, 45, right? We multiply by 15.0463. We add redemption value, which in this case, we have redemption value. In that case, we'll always take per value, which is 1,000. Per value, we take it as a thousand by present value interest factor 0 0.0972. Uh, so that should give us a figure of how much, my good students. We are going to talk about 45. We multiply by 15.0463. Okay, we add a thousand by 0 0.0972. Uh, 72. So that should give us a figure of. I'm having 774.28. So that is the figure that I'm getting. Kindly confirm if we're getting the same things. Kindly confirm if we're getting the same answer. So in that case, uh, we are, we've dealt with part one, where we were asked to determine the value of the bond. So that is the value of the bond in our case. That is the value of the bond. The other part, the other part, what were we asked to do, my good students? The other part. So the other part, what were we asked? Let me share the question again here. 
the other part is what you asked the new value of the bond if yield to maturity goes down to eight percent the yield value the new value of the bond if yield to maturity goes down to eight percent so basically there all the examiner wants us to do is the redemption percentage should be the same as the cost of equity the one that you had the cost of the bond but instead this time round uh the cost of the bond while will be well uh, that uh, when the maturity period reaches it will be eight percent so ideally that is what the examiner is telling us to do that is what the examiner is telling us to do so therefore that will be easy because this is what you are going to do so this is what you are going to do so what is changing is uh the aspect of uh, our core kd so in this case we are told that uh, our new KD is 8% per annum. So we are doing it per semi annum. So therefore, we should be talking of 8 divided by 2 to give us what? 4%. Right? To give us 4%. To give us 4%. So therefore, what we will be having this now will be very simple because what we are going to do, we need to determine that factor. We need to determine that factor. We need to determine our factor. And uh, talk of uh, our factor will be at this point. Therefore, we should work out our cost of debt has changed. Our cost of debt has changed to four percent. So, therefore, what will be our factor here? So, what I'm going to do allow me to erase there so that we work it out together. So, this time round, I'm looking at four percent. So, therefore, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take our four percent here that is four percent and this one is four percent and this one is four percent so that is the only component that is changing so therefore what will we be having what we'll be having as our new values if our cost of debt has reduced from 12 to eight percent we should be talking of one of course, uh, 1.04 raised to power negative 40. The period will not change. 1 minus answer divided by 0 0.04. Therefore, in this case, we should be having 19. I'm, having, I'm getting 19.7928. Whereas the other one, 1 1.04 raised to power negative 40. I'm having 0 0.2083. So, therefore, our market value will change to how much? Our market value, therefore, will change to 45. We multiply by, in this case, we're talking about uh, 19. Point, uh, seven, nine, two, eight. We add. A thousand by zero point two zero eight three. So therefore, what should we be having? We should be talking of uh, forty five by nineteen point seven nine two eight. We add a thousand by point two eight two zero eight three. So therefore, we should be talking of how much? Our new market value will be ten ninety eight point nine eight. So that should be our new market. That should be our new market value of the bond. That should be our new market value of the bond. And this is what we'll be required to do. That is what you are required to do in that question. So if it has reduced, we'll find that. Also, our value of the bond will change. Our value of the bond will also change. So, the moment you've grasped this concept, a lot us also to consider illustration question number two. This one is going to come from our past papers. This one is going to come from our past paper. And this question will be as follows. Consider this question, my good students. A question was attested uh, in May 2018. May 2018. 
May 2018. So, specifically part D, question number one, part uh, <coughs> question number one, part B. Uh -huh. So, question number one, part B, this is what you are told, that Chauringo Limited wishes to expand its business. The company is considering to issue 50 million worth of redeemable bonds, denominated in 1,000 shillings. The bonds rate of interest is 10% and will mature on 30th June 2028. The bond will be issued on 1st July 2018. The cost of capital is 18% per annum for the whole period required. The current value of the bond. And number two, the power value of the bond. The power value of the bond. The power value of the bond. So given such a question, my good students, what are you going to do? The first thing that you need to do is to smile. The first thing that you need to do is to smile. Because at this point, we know very well that we are dealing with what? Redeemable. You are dealing with redeemable bonds. So therefore, that will be easy to work it out because this is what you are going to do. This is what you are going to do. So long as you've noticed that you are dealing with redeemable uh, bonds, the first thing that you need to do, this is what we'll be having. So, you were wondering, morning was a flu, kidogo, but that won't deter us from continuing, right? So, the first thing that you need to do is to always remember that at this point, I am dealing with what? I am dealing with uh, redeemable bonds. And therefore, this concept will always be very key. To determine the market value of our redeemable bonds, you know very well, we'll be talking about the interest times the present value interest factor annuity given the cost of debt and the number of years. We add the redemption value. We add the redemption value we multiply by the present value interest factor, KD, number of years. Given our question, let us first start by identifying the variables. Let us start by first identifying the variables. Believing that you know the question that you are handling, that is of course uh, May 2018. That's a question in... Uh, May 2018, May 2018, and it should be question, let me check the question number 1B, May 18, question number 1B, May 2018, question 1B, question 1B, and I had shared it earlier on, so on this case, let us identify first thing first. Let us determine our component of interest. What will be our interest, my good students? Our interest in this case, we know very well that we were given 10% and the power I was given 1,000, right? So we can clearly say that my interest will be 10% times 1,000. Of course, that should give us what? 100. Uh huh. Cost of debt. What percentage are we given as our cost of debt in that question of ours, my good students? In our question, the cost of debt, you can clearly see, you are told that the cost of capital is 18% per annum for the whole period. So we can agree that cost of debt is what? 18%. What about the number of period? We are just analyzing our variables. We are just analyzing our variables. So the number of period, we can clearly see that was given from... 1st July 2018, that is when the bond will be issued, to 30th June 2028. So we are talking of 1st July 2018 to uh, 31st uh, to 30th June. To 
30 June 2028. So you can clearly see here you're talking about roughly like actually it's 10 years, right? So I'm talking about 10 years. Then other key element should be to identify our factor, present value interest factor, annuity, cost of debt is 18%. How many years? 10 years. And we'll also be required to determine the present value interest factor, 18%, 10 years. Believing that we are very familiar using our table, so we can use our table. And this time round, last time we did a question and we used our, we used our uh, formula in our calc. So probably for those who wish to know using the table, this is how we are going to work it out. I'm going to share this table with us here. This is our table, present value, present value table, present value table. We start with annuity, we start with annuity, we start with annuity. So this is our table here, this is our table, this is annuity. So what you are going to do, my good students, this is what you are going to do. Let us work it out together. We are talking of uh, 18%. So in our first row, we look at where we have 18%. Look at where we have 18%. Like in our case, I can clearly see my 18% just after 16. Just look at our first row, the percentage row, 18%. We are talking of how many years, my good students? You are talking of 10 years. So scroll from on that 18, just go downwards to where it is intersecting with period 10. To where it is intersecting with period 10. So on my case, or rather on our case, you can clearly see I'm having 18%. 10 years, we are having 4.4941. 4.4941. Point four nine four one. So that is our factor using present value interest factor annuity. That is our annuity table. That is our annuity table. That is our annuity table. What about for lump sum? For lump sum, this is what you are going to do. For lump sum, present value interest uh, table. For lump sum, I'll just take my figure there. Let us take our table. This is our table. I want to share with us. So look at it. Use the same same uh, concept. We go to our first row, the percentage row. We check where we have 18%. Then on 18%, we scroll to where we have uh, come downwards to where these two points are intersecting, the 10th period and the 18, which clearly you can see is 0 0.1911. 0 0.19. 0 0.19, 0 0.1911. Kindly confirm if you are getting the same things, if you are getting the same factors. So the moment I'm able to identify our factors, now things will be very easy for us because this is what we are going to do. We are going to take our formula here with us very confident, confidently, interest, we have it as 100. We multiply by the present value interest factor annual cost of debt uh, in the years 4.4941. We are going to add the redemption value. We mentioned that the redemption value will always be our power value, right? So we'll be taking 1,000 there. We multiply by our factor, which is 0 0.1911. So therefore, what will we be having here? What will we be having at this point of ours, my good students? We are going to talk about 100. That should be 100. We multiply by 4.4941. We add 1,000 by 0 0.1911. So that should give us a figure of our market value will be 640.51. Our market value would be 640.51.51.
640.51 640.51 because that is what you are asked to work out the current value of the bond so the current value of the bond we should be having 640.51 640.51 then the other part you are asked the par value of the bond par value of the bond uh -huh. uh, par value of the bond this is what you are told in regard to par value of the bond so having our par value of the bond par value of the bond par value of the bond we know very well it will be the one that we've taken there which is a thousand shillings which is a thousand shillings which is a thousand shillings so basically that is what you're required to do in, the, in, the, in that question my dear students so as you can clearly see so long as you've understood the whole concept behind you identifying the market value and if you've gone through our first video when we introduced uh, the aspect of valuation of uh, bonds and dividends you'll find it to be very sweet and very easy so to that point that will mark the end of that topic uh, not that topic but that concept of valuation of debentures we've done a lot of questions which are in our phone application so if you've not downloaded mdarasa phone application and you're watching us maybe via youtube uh facebook or whichever social media that you're watching us we have more of these videos in our phone application clearly stated and just the way as we've done like this you'll find that grasping the concept is always very easy so and right now, as so you are preparing for examinations, we have amazing offers for you guys. So today, right now, if you are using uh, your Android phone, just go to Play Store, search MDarasa, download the phone application, you create your account. For those who are using probably iOS, you can log in to our portal on web.mdarasa dot co dot ke you create your account as student and in that case after successful logging in you can now select the unit that you want to do if it is financial management you go to financial management so to that juncture thank you so much and let us meet in our next session thank you